And the quote says, Frank was standing there, says Elaine de Kooning. First I painted the whole structure of his face. Then I wiped out the face. And when the face was gone, it was more Frank than when the face was there. Hmm. I painted the whole thing, right? I put in all that effort. I studied it. I translated it. And then when I wiped it away, it was more true than when it was there. It's kind of how I feel like in life right now. I've worked so hard. I've done so much. And wiping it away feels like the most honest thing I can do. Help Me See is a podcast dedicated to the art of seeing. It's a space for the restless visionary with an insatiable desire to create the life and work you're meant for. My name is Bianca Leah Mora, and I'm a photographic artist, a mother, and a coach who's transformed my fear of loss into power, art, and philosophy. One of the scariest quotes I never want to say is I wish I knew at the time. But I truly believe that we have the innate ability to bring our wise 2020 hindsight to our now. You can deeply experience your nostalgia now while it's actually happening with no regrets. All you have to do is see. In this show, we laugh, we cry, we get inspired, we overshare. <laughs> we have life-changing conversations around making meaning, self-discovery, and shedding all of the BS layers in order to reconnect to our own sacred vision. Seeing yourself is an essential key to living powerfully. You are the vessel, the lens that filters absolutely everything in your life. What are you filtering for? Whether it be conversations with fellow artists and visionaries or my solo audio journal style introspective ramblings, each episode is meant to feel like an exhale, an unraveling of truth, a moment for you to be able to put your finger on something that you haven't been able to for far too long. Come exactly as you are. It's perfect. Honor your instincts. Let's uncover some of the most important things in our lives, which all too often can slip out from our view. Let's commit to seeing and consciously creating what only you can in your one and only life. Let's dive in. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Help Me See. Today, I am coming to you to talk through me trying to figure out what the fuck my problem is with this obsession I feel like I'm having in, de in remembering what I'm even doing right now. You're like, um, wasn't this episode last week? No. <laughs> Different crisis. <laughs> um, no, I was, uh, I was submitting, um, some pictures to an open call and I found myself going to, um, see past entrance and like the work of, uh, you know, some of the jurors. And then I was like, but what am I doing that for? Like what? Like, yeah, I guess it's smart ish, perhaps, maybe. But also, why am I doing that? You know, it's like that. If you're wanting your work to, you know, get you a certain work assimilating to what already exists doesn't make sense. It's like trying to be more like what's already abundantly available. It just makes you, you know, a smaller fish in that pond. Like the only thing that's going to set you apart is really deepening into you specifically, putting those horse blinders on and being like, but what is it that I truly give a fuck about? Not what is interesting visually, not, um, you know, what's some, you know, trending 
theme of sorts, but what do I really, really care about? And how do I, first of all, how do I be in that? Before you worry about creating, how do I be in that? And I don't mean like, how do I diagnose that or figure it out? Because so often, I mean, I'm sure you know that you create, you take pictures, you write to find out what you think, to be in it, um, to honor it, to acknowledge it, to process it in so many ways. But as I was looking at the pictures, I found myself thinking, hmm. if this one even got selected, what would I feel about that? What are the ones that would really make me feel if this one got selected versus that one? And the greater conversation we're having right now, of course, is that about how we're living our lives. And it's just so hard to untangle from all of the established guidelines and examples that we are engulfed and surrounded by. Models of how people tend to live their lives, models of how to work like this, how to be like that, how to parent your kids, how to, I don't know, just all of it. Let me read you this. Um, so I have started another book on <laughs> embodiment. <laughs> I have started yet another book. Um, let me see what it's called. I haven't finished this book that I'm obsessed with, A Primer for Forgetting Yet. I have, um, hold on, where's the book? What is it called? I don't know. Oh, Awake Where You Are by Martin Alward. Alward? The Art of Embodied Awareness. And it says, all that we, ch this is like a quote from Tara Brock. All that we cherish, love, creativity, wisdom, and aliveness becomes available when we are fully grounded in our bodies. Martin offers timeless practices that lead us home. Okay. So I'm reading that book. And as I'm reading that book, I'm thinking, <laughs> think that's already oxymoronic. I'm thinking it's all about getting out of your head. But, um, wow, I've attached so much meaning and so much, I have so much dependence on my photographic practice to reveal to me how I and what I think and feel that I feel not only lost without it, but hmm, It's like a, a gap of identity. And I'm also not someone that forces myself to photograph when I don't feel like it at all. I'll go a long time without picking up my camera. Um, I mean, not my cell phone camera. I take pictures all the time with that, too. But um, not in any sort of – in a very, like, sketchbook way, in a very, um, like, journal writing, morning pages way, um, which I find to be extraordinarily helpful um, but I think that working in that way, although a lot of it has core ties to honoring in instinctual impulse that I feel within me, I so quickly bring it up and out, like up into my head and out into what's in front of me. And yes, like as I'm actually in the work of pressing that fucking button like looking through the hole taking the picture um it's a very visceral like i'm feeling i'm not planning i'm not overly strategizing or anything like that i'm just being with it in presence in flow and whatever but i don't know that i spend enough time like in embodiment, in life in general, like all across the board. And I'm, I'm curious if you as a maker of whatever sort, whatever that is, whether it's uh, photography, painting, writing, homemaking, like literally anything is an art. 
when you treat it as so, when you feel it as so. So whatever that is for you, whatever comes to mind, are you leaning on that in the way of like you're depending on that to give you answers? And I don't know, I'm saying this, I really kind of mean this neutrally. I'm not saying that this is bad, but it's information, right? It's, and it's also, if we're, if, if we can bring ourselves to admit that, like, "Mm, yeah, I'm putting, I'm putting this responsibility of sorts on my craft, on my art, on my whatever, you're inherently welcoming in, um, insidiously the dependency of uh or the responsibility of the the the, sorry you're welcoming in so many external factors because your craft is something that is like put out into the world whether or not you're like literally putting it out to be juried or whatever um you know submitting it or blah 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 even if it's a private thing once it's outside of you and it's in the world there's so many other factors that come into play and I'm just wanting to note that like as personal as I feel like my practice is I also am finding myself very spacey and scattered and like feeling differently and I don't know like the other day I was editing pictures I took on vacation and I felt like sick to my stomach. Not in a like, oh, I don't want to be doing this way, but in a like that aching, nostalgic way. And I don't know that I'm supposed to do anything with that information, but I just thought, huh, like this is some serious feelings that I'm feeling about this. And... Yeah, it was, and it was one of those days where nothing I was doing felt like right in terms of editing. And I love editing for this reason because it forces this um, coming to meet the work in a space that like I already feel in my body and in my eyes that it is. And I can't rest until it's like, I've made it look the way it feels inside of me and it's been really hard for me. And, um, you know, I'm in this position where I feel like I'm, my style is changing a little bit, but I'm not quite sure how or why or what, but, um, so it's kind of like growing pains in that area. But anyway, so I'm sharing all this because, I want you to know that if you are in a similar space, it is not a bad thing. It can be very unsettling and uncomfortable. I mean, no matter how many years into a practice you are, I feel like we know rationally that this beginner's mind and this being opened and curious and available for growth and change and transformation is like the best thing we can do for ourselves and for the work. And also when you're this deep in and you're coming to into that spot, it's like, what the fuck? What am I even doing? Who am I? What am I? Um, anyway, so I opened to a page before I started recording and I um, from this book that I haven't read in a little bit now. And it is a painting by Elaine de Kooning uh, of Frango Hara or O'Hara? I forget. Uh, And it's from the Museum of Forgetting, Gallery of Erasures. And the quote says, Frank was standing there, says Elaine de Kooning. First I painted the whole structure of his face. Then I wiped out the face. And when the face was gone, it was more Frank than when the face was there. Hmm. I painted the whole thing, right? I put in all that effort. I studied it. I translated it. And then when I wiped it away, it was more true than when it was there. It's 
kind of how I feel like in life right now. I've worked so hard. I've done so much. And wiping it away feels like the most honest thing I can do. Hi, you're good. What's up? What's up? It's okay, buddy. Okay, so I just <laughs> had my kids call me for a second. I have for the first time ever, today is day two, um, like a neighbor um, that's kind of helping kind of babysit and play with them. Both of us are still here. Um, their dad and I are still here. Um, it's from like 10 to 2, uh, three days a week. And um, so it's really, really nice. And I'm still... <laughs> This is only day two, and I've been up and down a million times, but it's still a massive help. But also really hard, because I was, like, so in the zone just now, talking in my basement. And then I had to go upstairs and, like, help, and it, like, in the sun outside with all the toys. And I'm like, wow, I feel like I live in, like, two different universes. <sighs> anyway. So, what I was saying about wiping it, wiping it clean is, like... I feel like so much of life after a layoff, like there's so many chapter points. It's like, um, I would say going to school has a few chapters. I would say then graduating college, first job, um, having a baby, definitely. Um, actually, having a dog first, that changed me a lot. Um, and then having a baby and then leaving full-time employment specifically has been like the hardest, I would say, um, it, well, actually that's not true. Not, not harder than my postpartum depression, <laughs> anxiety. but, um, I'd say it has definitely been the most earth shattering to, the greater scope of like foundational living as I knew it and as I metabolized it and like really understanding the depths in which I was basing my value and my life experiences off of and my time, my time on this planet and my finances and my expectations and my whatever based off of all of these constructs, uh, and witnessing and feeling how it has felt to have to decide something different and not having an example um, has been hard because inherently we're searching for other examples. We're searching for uh, things that we resonate with. And I think that it, in with my best intentions and the best intentions of others, I, I feel like I've seen too much now. And it's just all too much. And I need to, I've like drink it in, like drink in the information and I love it. And, you know, I would go to school my whole life if I could and <laughs> all of that. But it very much feels like a time of like shutting down, like closing out the outside influences and going inside and really sensing and feeling what feels good because I've, I've hit a wall cognitively. I'm like, I can't figure this out ahead of experiencing it. Um, and it makes perfect sense. It's the same way if I'm going into a um, photo session. I cannot plan, I cannot figure out the pictures I'm going to take before being there and feeling there and being in that. And um, the most important part of any any work, any art, any anything is... I don't know if succumbing is the word. It feels like a weird word to use, but like to the moment, like just surrendering any preconceived notions, any thoughts, any plans, any whatever, just like putting it all down and just being there and moving from that place of honesty and truth. And so that's what I'm doing right now, putting everything down. Um, but in, in regards to how that's manifesting in my work, my artwork, um, 
It's it's uncomfortable, and I'm brought back to that familiar question of like, but what's the point? But what's the point? But why? Like, even if I figure this out, but why? What is the point? I think so much of it has to do with honestly feeling like I've arrived fully in all aspects of my life and my work. Have I arrived fully to my life, to myself, to this moment, um, and not depending on my brain to construct a story that makes me feel okay about it, but like feeling in into my body in that way. And I don't really know what that means. Like, I don't know what that means, but I know, I know what I mean. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. No, it's like, you know, I think this makes me, okay, so this idea of like arriving fully, this is making me think of like those pictures that I took of my parents um, on vacation and some of them were like, so beautiful to me but it's still I was feeling like sick like it just felt like sick about it and it's like I think I was like confronting myself with the images of like was I fully there like I remember how I felt in that moment and I remember you know obviously subconsciously I was seeing and like taking pictures and making the work as I always do but it was also a really tough trip for me there's a bunch of stuff that happened that really stressed me out and freed me in intense ways. And um, I don't know, I look at those pictures I took and I see my whole life. I see my whole history uh, with them and like how they are a metaphor, the two of them in their opposites for like what's inside of me. And the pictures give me a second chance to arrive in that moment. And I think in that arrival, I felt like sick. In that arrival, I felt like overwhelmed um, and that's okay. And that's okay. You know, it, whether it's yoga or um, a breathwork class or whatever it is, I'm always so grateful for the reminder that the teacher has to say when they talk about noticing like something that hurts or is sore or is tight or you know, something in your body that's not feeling like, you know, pleasant and how just notice it and, and stop. You don't have to fix it. Just notice it. And it's those moments where I'm like, wait, what? I don't have to do something about it. What? Just let it just see it and like not action on it. What? And I think that that is so huge, not only in the moment, but like going forward in life. Because when we think about how everything we see and uncover, if we take everything as our personal responsibility, as a like our burden or our thing to figure out or our whatever, and we pick up all of these things along the way, okay, I can't address it now because I'm doing this, but I, I know it and I feel it. And I'm going to remember this and then. Uh, I'm dog earing it. I'll fix it. I'll pick that up. I'll pick this up. I'll pick that up. Every single moment, every step you take, you're carrying so much, so much more than is even possible, so much more than than is possible to even help you be in the moment for the thing that's unrelated or the thing that's might otherwise be extremely helpful, but you're not able to really be with it. And again, this is really hard to acknowledge and be aware of unless we have either a mirror, like a, a, a really amazing friend or coach that is, you know, 
kind of reflecting back um, what we're saying or we utilize ourself as that with our photographs or our practice or whatever we're, our, we're making in our life to be able to kind of abstract and bring yourself back and be like, hmm, let me look at this as if it wasn't me. Let me take away all of those filters and those judgments and lenses that I use when I know something has anything to do with me. And let me look at it now in this way. And then there's the element of when you're like, no, I know it. I'm aware of it. I see it. And yet I'm not changing it. And that fucking worse. <laughs> it's the worst. Because then you're mad at yourself in a deeper level. You're like, I know better. I know better. And yet, I'm repeating this pattern. And I think that magnifying glass, just in the same way as a magnifying glass outside in the sun, the heat will go into that thing and like burn that blade of grass or whatever. It That intensity of, quote unquote, knowing better, but not being able to stop a habitual habit like that point of contention is so intense and so taxing energetically that energetically physically um that it really hinders our ability to actually do make a different choice because we don't have the energy it takes a lot of energy to change a habit um and it's not that it, it doesn't matter what the new habit is. Like it could be something like the habit of I want to instead of working out, relax. But you're so used to working out that like it's easier to work out than it is to relax and or vice versa, whatever. Um, it's just like being gentle and OK with yourself with like, acknowledging like, yes, I've just been doing it like this for so long. And the absolute biggest thing I could ever possibly do for myself is just be aware and notice it. And when you're okay with that, when you let that be, I think in time it becomes easier to shift out of that because you're not like white knuckling, you're not grinding your teeth. You're just inviting yourself in those micro moments to like soften. It's okay, I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay. Okay, I floundered through this conversation and gone on tangents and uh, I'll end with this. I'll end with this. So I have been really feeling very spacey and frenetic and like, oh, gosh. And I don't know if it's summer, having both kids at home, having a lot of travel, this or that. Um but it has been harder than normal to have the drive to engage in work. And I believe it's because I'm like uprooting and like searching for a new home for my like foundational thoughts around what I'm doing or coming back to a remembrance of it, whatever. Anyway, bleh. my gosh, I'm so sick of my own brain sometimes. <laughs> Are you it's like... Are you still there? I'm so sorry if you are. <laughs> um, but I, so I was listening to a Vox from my friend and she, her and I are collaborating on um, an Oracle card deck. I love Oracle card decks. They're just so fun and they just breathe this intentionality and resonance into your day and um i have for a long time been um planning to make my own card deck around my topic of choice and um she has been wanting to do that as well and i was like oh let's you know plan to have some sort of like creative day where we work together um even though they're separate projects um but then it came up that i was going to provide the visuals for her and like once she starts writing down what the messages are and what the the card titles are, then I can take that and feel into that and see, you know, what photographs I want to take and what 
what would be my way of metabolizing that? And she had left me a box saying, yeah, I thought that would be really cool. If I'll, I'll send you a few examples of what you're think, I'm thinking, and then you can send me a few examples of like your interpretation of it, and we can go back and forth a few times. But she's like, I, I understand if you have too much going on right now, and we don't have to do this, um, you know, for a while or blah, blah, blah. But it was so clear in my body that I'm like, no, no, this is the, the, a clear yes. It's like, oh my gosh, there's just nothing, there's nothing to overthink. There's nothing, it's just feel. Just, oh, she's going to bring me a message. I'm going to read it and I'm going to just go from there. I'm like, oh, no, yeah, of all the things going on in life, I'm like, this is a clear yes. Like, I'm happy to work on it and make time for it and blah, blah, blah. And then I thought to myself, why <laughs> can't I just treat my whole fucking life like an Oracle deck? Then? <laughs> then this assignment, then this, like, w exactly what is making me excited and like, very clear about yes can we not treat our whole lives like that just meet what is presented to you feel into it and move from there easier said than done easier said than lived and also is it must it be What in your life right now is a clear yes, not burdened with responsibility and and expectation and performance and um, concern for judgments and thoughts and insecurity? What in your life just jumps out at you as yes, just a clean, fun yes, like, oh. Uh, Yes, this is life. This is what life's about. This is where I feel energized and embodied and blah, 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 blah. Whatever it is, whatever comes to your mind, how can that be your whole life? And it doesn't have to be like, how can you turn that into a business? Or, But like, really sit with that. And it's like, if there's something so true and so clear and so honest and so inspiring and so right for you, what business do you have not making that your whole life? <laughs> like that sentiment or that approach or that however you come into contact with that, however you arrive in that. How can that reverberate? How can that expand to your whole life? Sometimes it feels like we all need to go into like a silent retreat blindfolded for like seven days and then come out into the world anew like free from all of the stuff all of the noise have you ever seen those videos of those like blind silent retreats and they take the blindfold off and like they're squinting because their eyes are so sensitive and then they're just crying looking at nature and oh my gosh it scares me but it seems really important maybe one day anyway Yeah, that also reminds me of how, like, the, my enthusiasm for this card deck. I, I've always had a really strong desire to um, create, like, book covers or album covers, um, like, listen to songs or read stories and then, like, feel into what does that look like and create from that space. Like, I really like that responding. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'll lean into more of that. You heard it here first. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm done. I'm done with my rambling. I hear a stampede upstairs. I don't know if you hear that or not. I apologize if you do. Um, they seem to be playing above my head. Um, okay. I hope that you have a glorious rest of your day. I hope that whatever came to mind is something that you can channel that energy and spread it to other parts of your life. I hope, you know, if, and if, nothing came to mind if you're really struggling and you're like shit i don't even know that's okay like that's information too you can neutralize that and you can think huh 
how does it make me feel that I couldn't think of something? You're like, oh, that makes me sad or pissed off or whatever. And just arrive at that and be with that. Be like, okay. And now your senses will be heightened to recognize the next time you do feel like that. The next time you do feel that like very clear yes. You can be like, oh yeah, that question that was asked of me yesterday or last week. Like, this is that. Okay, here it is. Instead of furrowing your brow and being like, what is it? <laughs> okay, okay. Sending so much love and I will catch you next time. This has been an Awkward Sage production. 